Um, and I'm going to start winding this on. Now, this is going to be a little lumpy. But that's as far as I'm going to go with that. I usually do it down here. I don't know if you're supposed to do that or not. But basically now what you can do, you can start weaving. Um, but you have to start by putting some waste in the front of it. Um, and that is actually where I start using these cardboard strips. So I put the pedal in the down position and then I put one of these cardboard strips in here. And then I raise it. And I put one of the cardboard strips in here. lower okay basically now I'm going to start weaving but I'm going to start weaving with waste yarn um, just so that I can get these warp threads these big gaps out of the warp threads okay so these are shuttle sticks and I'm going to be using two of them for this project. Um, but for right now, I'm going to use one. And this is just a ball of leftover DK weight yarn. I'm going to wind some of it onto one of the shuttle sticks so I have some to work with, um, you know, as my, my starting yarn to get the warp evened out. So I didn't put a lot on there. If I need more, I can always add more. Um, and this, this is nothing fancy because this is yarn that is eventually going to just be taken out of the finished project. So this is in the lower position now. And I'm going to put that in between the two shed, the, in the shed, in between the upper and the lower threads. When I had the camera over here and you could see in through there, that's called the shed. I brought that over here and I'm putting this on... That would be a 45 degree angle, so I would say 20, 20 ish degree angle. And then I'm going to bring that forward. And I'm going to put it in the up position and take it back over once I have enough yarn out. And I'm just going to lightly hold this here. I don't want to pull in like that, like, you don't want to do that. You just want to have that gently there. And as you can see, those gaps are starting to close up already. And I'm just going to do this probably for, I don't know, maybe an inch or so, just until I'm feeling comfortable that those gaps are closed up between the warp segments from where I had them tied. So at this point, you can see the gaps are closed up. I really don't feel like I need to continue on with this anymore. Um, it's totally, I think, personal preference, but I think that's plenty. Again, at the very end of the project, this is all going to picked out, be picked out. Um, it's just there to even things out right now. So I'm going to cut that. and. Since I'm going to use both of my shuttle sticks, I'm going to take this excess yarn off of this one since I put more on there than I needed for my waste yarn. And now I'm going to start, um, well actually I'm going to unclamp 
the loom from the table now. Okay. Those will eventually all get rolled under. I'm not worried about them at all. I could probably trim them off a little bit so there's less under there. And I may, but anyway. So these are the yarns that I'm gonna be using for my weft. So that's the ones that are going across. Um, when I did the first piece that I already showed you, I really didn't have any rhyme or reason. Um, I'm just trying to work with colors that sort of go together in some way. So like these two would be good ones to start with. Um, and then I'm just kind of working, you know, down and eventually I'll use all of them. Um, I'm doing two passes with one color and then switching and doing two passes with another color just to blend them as I go. They're all different lengths, so it's kind of ending up, they're overlapping, like an old one is overlapping with a new one, which is kind of what I wanted. Um, there's really no big plan for this. Um, it's just what it turns out to be. Um, but yeah, so it'll be fun. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna open these up. These are just little mini skeins open these up and wind each one of these onto one of these shuttle sticks just like I showed you with the waist yarn. So anyway, these are ready to go. And I just wanted to mention too, these are not the shuttle sticks that came with my Ashford loom. This is one of the ones that came with it. It's perfectly serviceable. Um, I ended up just needing more, so I bought these two. I got these from a shop on Etsy called Holland Hoof. I'll try to remember to put a link in the show notes to them. They make really beautiful wooden products for weaving. Um, I have a pickup stick from them too. Anyway, I think they're out of Ohio. So anyway, neither here nor there. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to start weaving. I have some more of these paper rolls um, because as I'm rolling this on to um, this front beam, um, once it starts to overlap, I'm going to do the same thing I did in the back just to keep things organized and smooth and I'm going to be putting those in the front as well. So, um, the whole thing about having this kind of a, t a rigid head of loom is you see these have these little indentations. Hopefully you can see that where I'm <laughs> aiming the camera. Um, that is to sit it at the front edge of a table. So that's how I'm gonna get myself set up here and I'm gonna move the camera so you can see that. I'm going to start by putting this in the down position. And then I'm gonna start with this one and I'm gonna leave um, about three times the length of my warp. Um, and I'm just going to kind of wind that up here. Because I'm going to use that at the end to do my hem stitching. So I want to have that available to me. All right, so we're just going to pass that through. And basically I'm just going to keep doing what I was doing when I was putting that initial yarn in there. As I do this, I always check to make sure that all of the correct threads are up. Um, the upper warp threads are up and I haven't accidentally caught one of the lower ones um, just to make sure that I'm not goofing anything up. This warp is pretty nice and smooth though, so I'm hoping I won't have that issue so much. Sorry. Um, I've had some really sticky warps in the past um, due to all the reasons I already talked about, like things crossed over in the back or not threading the hole with the correct thread to keep things straight. Or sometimes it's just the yarn that you're using. If it's a stickier yarn, um, that can happen as well. Oh, you know what? I'm not doing this correctly. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> taking that out. Um, I did my first two passes with this um, shuttle or 
shuttle stick. So now I'm going to add in the second one because I'm alternating. So I'm going to sit this one over here for right now, and that'll be important in a minute. So I'm going to go through with the second color, and I'm just going to leave this little bit hang out here for a minute, and I'll tell you what to do with that, or what I do with it anyway, in a second. All right, so I've gone down, put it in the up position. I'm going to take this little tail, um, and this is kind of my weaving version of weaving in ends as I go. And I'm just sticking it in there and I'm pulling it through the bottom. I've crossed over like five of the bottom threads and I'm just popping it down there. So it's there. It's fine. I'm still in the up position to do this. I'm coming back across. Okay. So there's my next two passes with the second shuttle stick, or the, yeah, the second shuttle. All right, so this one I'm going to take, and I'm going to lay it on the table too, but I'm going to lay it to the right of the one that I was using before. And that's something that I'm going to remember to do every time. And as we go along, I can show you what the result is when I do that. It makes a really pretty edge on this side, is essentially what it does. So. And that actually is something that will come into play also whenever I do my next video when I show you um, how to do the hound's tooth pattern. Again, I'm just pinching lightly here so that this doesn't pull this outer warp thread in. And then I'm leaving it kind of at this 20 degree angle when I bring it down. And again, I'm putting that on the inside and then taking this one from the outside and removing cat hair from my yarn as I go. Now, the colors that I'm using for my weft are obviously quite different than the colors that were in the warp. Um, these are sort of more springy pastel -y colors, whereas the warp was very nice autumnal colors. But honestly, there are so many colors in that warp um, that pretty much anything you put with it looks nice. <laughs> um, a couple of weaving resources that I've talked about on the podcast in the past has been, um, well, I've already mentioned Grace from Babbles Traveling Yarns. She's done several podcasts in which she's talked about her weaving it may not have been the the whole point of the video like it might not have been the only subject but she's also done some videos that had it as the subject so you can check her videos on youtube again i will try to link to her um at least her channel if not some specific videos sorry I'm trying to get that out of there um in the show notes so she's a good resource um, another really good resource is Kelly Casanova, which I've mentioned before. Um, she's got a lot of free videos on YouTube about weaving. And I also mentioned to you the last, I think the last regular episode I recorded, that I've signed up for her weaving school um, online, which makes you... You're, I'm avail, I can avail myself to any of her weaving videos, many of which are not on YouTube. So, okay, what am I doing? Did I do that right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I will link to her things too. Um, Benita Story is another one. She has done some weaving videos, which have been really interesting to watch. She weaves with a floor loom though, at least the videos that I've watched, she was working with a floor loom. And so while there's similarities in things that you would do there as opposed to um, on a rigid head of loom, there's also a lot of differences. Um, so it may or may not be super helpful. Your mileage may vary on that one, but I'll link it anyway because Benita is a really wonderful educator about fiber art stuff. Um, in general. Okay, 
I'm going to continue working on this and then once I get to a point where I'm going to roll this on more I will stop and show you that. Okay I'm getting to the point where I can probably eke out one more pass with this. Yeah <laughs> it's getting tight. So put that one in there. Up position is always easier. Okay, so I'm going to put it in neutral and I'm going to release the back. Um, I don't know that you can, let's see. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to show you. But anyway, I'm going to release this back um, lever. To, so this is free now. And then I'm going to roll this forward. So now all of those knots and everything that I had in here, actually, I'm gonna roll this back this way again a second. Um, all those are gonna start to go up underneath. So I'm gonna start using a piece of paper under here. And then I also have that little bit of yarn that I left um, in order to do my hem stitching later on. So that's also hanging there. But it'll just, it'll just roll under there. All right. I can't roll this on too far because, oops, you're not even seeing it. Yeah, I can't roll it on too, too far because I need to be able to weave in the front. So I'm going to stop right about here and I'm going to latch the back again. And I'm just going to roll that backwards now, which will once again put tension on my warp. So, um, and then I usually do this just to kind of beat down that last thread that kind of got goofed up in the process of that. So at this point, I'm going to just continue weaving. Um, as one of my yarns runs out, I'll pick another one from my basket to wind on in its place. The purple is obviously going to run out before this brightly colored one. And I'm going to just continue to work ev every two rows, um, alternating my yarns and I'll keep rolling on to the front as I go as as is necessary and um, yeah that's what I'm gonna have to do and um, then when we get to the end I can show you what to do there okay so we are back with my little loom here it's been over a week um, I did actually get the weaving done fairly quickly I just haven't had a chance to sit down and finish this video so I'm gonna try to do that this morning so um, I've basically reached the end of my warp. Um, I wanted to, I needed to leave enough on here to use for my hem stitching, which is what I'm going to show you next. Um, typically, I use, I, I probably reserve about mm, four times as much as I would use for one pass. So four times the width. I've actually probably got double that on here now that I'm looking at it because one wrap of this is about one width of the warp um, and it's doubled. So this is actually more yarn than I'm going to need, but that's okay. Um, actually, maybe I'll just weave a tiny bit more and then uh, come back to it so I don't waste this. So hang on a second. <laughs> okay, there we go. I did four more passes or picks. Um, so now I'm definitely down to less than that. So I'm going to take this off of here. So, I mean, as you can see, if, if I put this across here, there's definitely four times. It's actually five times. So I've got plenty of yarn to do my hem stitching. Now, <clears throat> I, again, just to remind you, <laughs> I'm really pretty new at weaving. So I don't have all the info. I'm just sharing with you what I've done to this point. Before I knew how to do hem stitching though, all I would do, and this is an option, is I would cut my warp off of the loom, which basically means taking your scissors and literally just cutting back here. And that leaves you with fringe. And then you can, you know, roll off your fabric and do the same thing on the front. 
Eventually, I am going to do that in both the back and the front, but this time I'm going to hem stitch first. If you chose not to hem stitch though, you can cut this off and then you'll just have your loose fringe and then you can either tie off your fringe, um, you know, just like take four strands and tie two and two together with double knots. I've done that. It's not super fancy, but it works. Um, you can also do a twisted fringe, which they sell a little tool called a fringe twister. You don't necessarily have to have the fringe twister, but it apparently makes it much easier to do twisted fringe if you have that. I have never done twisted fringe, so I'm really not the person to tell you about that. Um, but I have learned how to do hem stitching, and that's kind of what I tend to do now at the end and then I wind back to the beginning and do it at the beginning as well of my fabric. So that's what I'm going to attempt to show you. Okay, so one thing that I tend to do when I'm at the end of my warp is I end the weft over on the right hand side because I'm right handed and whenever I do my, my uh, hem stitch, I like to work from right to left. That's just what's most comfortable for me um, you can do it either direction, whatever works best for you, you know, that works best for you. So I would encourage you to do that. Um, but for me, I like working right to left. So basically what I'm going to do, I obviously you saw me take my yarn off my shuttle stick. I'm going to thread it onto a tapestry needle and this is a chibi needle. So it's the kind that comes in these little plastic cases. Um, called chibi. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen them before. Anyway, I like them because they've got this little um, angled point to them. So I like them for this and I like them just for, you know, when I'm weaving in ends on my knitting, whatever, they seem to work best. I am not an expert at hem stitching by any stretch of the imagination, um, but this is how I go about it generally <laughs> until I figure it out. Okay, so this is over this last warp thread, right? You wanna catch this. It needs to be snugged up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to put it underneath the warp, the weft thread. See where I'm going up here? I wish there was a way I could have the camera looking straight down, but I don't have that capability. So I'm just gonna put this in here and pull that up and that just sort of locks that in place okay and then I'm going to take it back to the outside and I'm going to okay for hem stitching it's a matter of going over so many warp threads and then down so many weft threads there is really no right or wrong way to do it I think it's personal preference and it's you know what you like the look of best i tend to do a two and two combination so going over two warp thread i have to do it from this direction so you can see what i'm pointing at over two warp threads and then down two weft threads and go in that little hole that's the hole i'm going to work with but i'm not going to be working with it from the top i'm going to be working with it from underneath so i'm going over two warp threads and then down two weft threads and I'm going to bring that up okay and then I'm going to go back over to the beginning again and I'm going to come back up where I originally um, no I didn't originally do this I'm going to go back up to where those two warp threads are and I'm going to come up here but you see how I have my 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 working yarn here kind of in a loop well you probably can't because I have it drawn in but anyway you can see this is all one loop I'm good as I pull this up I'm gonna make it go through the center of that loop okay and so that has secured that hem stitch And now I'm going to do the same exact thing, except I'm going to start counting from that second warp thread and I'm going to go over two more. So over two more warp threads and down two more weft threads to that hole. 
You know what, let me see if I can get this situated a little. Okay, that might be better. Let me back that out of there so I can show you again. Okay, so here are my two, first two warp threads that I did. Now I'm gonna come up between the, third warp, the second warp thread and the third, and I'm gonna count over one, two, okay? Can you see that? This is not the best setup, I am sorry. So over two more, down two weft threads to this little hole. And I'm gonna come up through this little hole. Not pulling super tight, again. And then I'm going to come over here, back to that same place that I started and come up under here pull this and I'm going to make it go through the loop of my yarn. Okay. And now we're going to do that again. We're going to start between the fourth and the fifth warp thread. Sorry, I'm blocking it with my hand. The fourth and the fifth warp thread go over two, one, two, and then down two weft threads, one, two, that little hole, come up, then go back in that first spot between thread four and five, come up on the other side of six, so between six and seven, those same two warp threads. I'm always working, as I do a single stitch, I'm always working with the same two warp threads. So I'm coming up here, and again, I'm going to bring this yarn through the loop of the yarn as I do that. Okay, so you can see, hopefully here, let me, if I lift this up, you can see where my, um, that's my hem stitch being done there. So I'm going to just continue along that way, going in where I came out the last time, going over two more threads, Two more warp threads, down two weft threads, coming up. And then, same place, just going up between those two warp threads, bringing it up, and making sure I'm going through my loop of yarn. I'm going to um, zoom this back out just so that you can see what I'm doing with this thread because I'm telling you but that honestly has always been what I've gotten stuck on and I wasn't doing right and if you don't do that you won't it won't lock in place like that stitch will just be kind of wrapped around but it won't be locked in place and it really isn't serving its purpose then so I've learned that the hard way so uh, let me zoom this out a little bit if I can Ooh, there we go okay so as I do this, hope, you won't be able to see this up close, but you'll be able to see what I'm talking about with this. All right, so I'm gonna do it again. Go in between these two, go over two, and then down two. So I'm coming up through there. And I'm just coming up on that one. That one, you're not doing anything with this working thread. Then I'm gonna go in here again, same place I started last time, up on the other side of the two warp threads. I'm not going down the weft threads this time. Just coming up here. But this is where I'm gonna be going in to this loop. So see there's a loop. You wanna go in there. And then that is what secures that stitch. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. You get into a rhythm after a while and it does get easier. It, I have to tell you the first few times I did this though, I could not wrap my head around this process. And every time I ended up having to go watch a YouTube video about how to do it because I just couldn't get it. I just, <laughs> it, was, it was very difficult for me to grasp this concept. I don't know why, because it's not difficult but you just have to know what you're doing. And I think it was that second step 
that I pointed out that going through that loop of your yarn, not when you're coming down through the weft threads, that one you just pull through, but it's this one where you're coming back up here through that same gap. You have to make sure you're crossing over. That would maybe be the better way to describe it. Crossing your needle over that thread and then coming out underneath the rest of the thread. Um, that was the part I was always missing. So hopefully that is helpful to you to hear me explain it. And I hope I've shown it to you in a way that is um, clear. Okay, so here we are. I'm almost to the end. So I'm going to do these last, well, the next to the last set of sti um, stitches. Okay, so now I'm down to my last two warp stitches. Now, before we were going over two and down two, we're going over two, but there isn't anywhere to go down to. So I'm basically just going to go down in that gap and I'm going to catch that loop and I'm going to just snug it up. So that's how I finish that. Um, I'm going to leave this length here because I may end up using this um, later on. If not, I can weave it in, um, but I'm just going to leave this. I'm not going to trim it. So that's all that we're doing here. This is my hem stitch. Let me see if I can zoom out and get a better sense of it. This is how we're doing it on this end. So now, let me, okay. Now we're gonna do the fun part here. Well, it's all fun. But we're gonna do this part where I'm going to cut this off the loom now so that we can roll back and do the other side. So, Again, this is going to be a little awkward doing this with the camera right here, but I'm, I'm just cutting. Just cutting through one layer of the warp threads. And where there's a knot, cut those off. Okay. And actually where there's a knot, I need to cut those off so I can get the heddle off. All right, so then we can just pick the heddle up. And it's off. So now I'm going to release this, this um, catch on the ratchet here. And I'm going to just pull and get my fabric. Move my papers out of the way as that comes out. So much fun. I love seeing all this. Okay, so now we're back at the beginning. Remember what the beginning looked like? Yeah. So we've had all this stuff all rolled up in there all this time. So what we're going to do now, um, I need to do the hem stitching on this end too. And that's why I left this little butterfly of yarn from my first weft wep thread. But before I can do that, I need to remove um, these cardboard bits, which I'm just going to pull these out, those spacers. But then you'll also remember that I wove in this um, waste yarn at the beginning. This dark green was waste yarn. So that has to come out first too before I can do my hem stitching. Um, one way to do this is to just take your, your needle and kind of work to pull it out the whole way across. It's not going to un it's not going to pull out easily if you start from the very end. So I usually go through the middle. However, I also like to do a shortcut and I very carefully will cut here. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit. Sorry. Um, I'll take my scissors and go in the middle and just very carefully, you're not seeing that, <laughs> cut that yarn in the middle so that as I'm pulling it out, I'm only having to pull out a half of it at a time. You just have to be really careful that you do not accidentally cut 
something important like a warp thread because that will be bad all right so I've got that out so now I'm gonna go back to I'm just gonna pull take one end and pull it's easier that way at least for you know for this kind of a narrow little weaving it goes pretty quick and it's DK weight yarn so it's not now if you really wanted to be able to you know reuse that bit of waste yarn then you probably wouldn't want to do that but it's a very little bit of yarn and I'm not too worried about it so okay so there we go that is the beginning of my actual fabric so I'm going to lock this again and in the past what I've done because like I've told you I like to work from right to left so this is on the left hand side so I need to flip this over anyway now let's see we're gonna have to move things a little bit sorry if I'm making you nauseous <laughs> um, what I'm gonna do and I don't always I usually just um, I usually just sort of work with it as it is but I am going to secure my fabric around um, this back beam so that I've got some tension on it. So all I did was I got a couple of binder clips <laughs> and I looped my fabric underneath the loom, actually all the way underneath, not just around this back beam, underneath, underneath this support, and I just clipped it together. Um, it's just adding a little bit of tension on here. It's not super tense, <laughs> um, but it's enough to help that I don't have to use one hand to like hold the fabric while I'm doing my hem stitching. It's just a little bit easier that way. Um, so anyway, I'm going to start doing this the same way I did on the other side because again I'm flipped over so I can be working right to left again which is my preferred direction. And again I'm going to do the over two down two. And I'm probably not going to record this whole thing because I just showed you how to do this. I do have an end. Wait, I caught my other end here. I don't want that in there. That was from the other weft thread. Okay, there we go. So. give yourself another obstacle for your thread to get your yarn to get caught on while you're doing this with the binder clip but again it is I just find it a little bit easier like I said I don't always do that sometimes I'm just lazy and I don't bother to go get the binder clip okay so anyway I'm gonna just continue across here and then I'm gonna be done and I will put this back on so I can show you the whole piece of fabric I wanted to pop back on here and say when you're doing this um, you might wonder how much tension you need to put on these hem stitches I don't like put a lot on like when you're going that diagonal that over to down to that first stitch that's just bringing it up here when you're doing that locking stitch which is the second step you know you want to snug it up but you don't want to yank on it um, there's no need you're, you're locking it in place and you're gonna have this whole string of locked stitches that's what you want now you wouldn't want it to be super loose because then it wouldn't be doing its job so when you did this you know you wouldn't want to leave it like that you can see you know what I'm talking about you wouldn't want to leave it loose like that but you know just snug it up and um, and you're good to go now I thought I would maybe try to show you what I meant before when I said like if you don't go through that loop or you don't take your needle over your working thread when you're coming up here on that second step of the stitch remember you have to go over that thread <laughs> and through the loop if you don't do that this is what you're gonna get. See how you just have that crossed stitch there? Can you see that? You have a cross stitch and there's nothing locked in place. So that is how you'll know you did it wrong if you don't have a locked stitch. So again, you're gonna take it up through those two stitches and then go through the loop. 
and then you're locked in place. And I have a cat behind me who thinks she's going to jump over here onto this table now. So I'm going to turn the camera off before she tries to knock it over. <laughs> Here's an interesting predicament. I did not leave myself enough yarn at the beginning to do my hem stitching. <laughs> I'm about an inch, a little over an inch shy, an inch and a half. So I've never had to deal with this before. So I did my last hem stitch that I can reasonably do. I'm going to just poke this down and have it on the bottom of the fabric. And I'm going to take another little mini here and just cut off enough yarn that I can use. It's not going to be the same color, but honestly, in this piece, it really doesn't matter. So where are my scissors? Sorry, there's my elbow. Um, yeah, so hmm, I've never had this happen before, <laughs> but I figure I will share my failure with you. Okay. It's not really a failure. It's just a tiny, tiny setback. So I just cut off a piece of another one of my little minis. I'm not 100% sure what the best way will be to start this though now. Let's see, I'm gonna come up. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna, no, do I wanna do that? Yes. Hmm. I'm gonna come up actually between, no. I'm gonna start on top. I don't know if this is right or wrong. Totally, this is something I've never had to do before. But I'm going to come up on top and do my over two, under two, or over two, down two. So I'm doing what I would always do. But here's the end of that yarn. I'm going to go and leave this down here and then finish the stitch. So that's secure. This. I'm just not sure what to do with this. Maybe, wait, I'm gonna loosen this up and I'm gonna put this up through the loop too before I snug it up. Oh, there, that's better. Now that's at least secure. And then I'm gonna poke it down underneath there. So it's there. I don't know if you were able to follow what I did, but I basically, I just did the stitch as I normally would, but before snugging it up, I stuck my end of this new yarn in that loop as well. Um, so it's all stuck together. It's not going to pull out or anything. And then whenever I take care of my ends on the underside of the fabric, um, that'll just be another end for me to deal with. So my hem stitching is now done on the beginning part. Okay, so now I'm going to take my binder clips off. Here's all my fabric. Here, let me turn this around. So now what I'm gonna do with where we tied these all off at the beginning, I'm just gonna pull and unknot those. Remember we did that overhand knot. I left way too much yarn here at the front, I think. I could have trimmed a whole bunch of that, but I always end up erring on the side of too much yarn up here, <laughs> ironically, whatever. So anyway, and then you can just pull this part off of here, and there we go. I have my, my new strip of fabric. Ta-da. There we go. And you'll see on the back from where I was adding new yarns, there will be ends, which um, usually after I soak my fabric, because you block this just like you would block knitting, although you don't like stretch it and pin it out necessarily, at least I don't. Um, but I soak it and then I'll go back after I've soaked it because the, the fabric will bloom. Um, then I'll trim those ends off. 
Um, and then I'll do whatever I'm going to do with the fringe. But since I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing with this fabric, I'm not trimming my fringe at all yet. Although that is really ridiculously long. That was my beginning. I, I definitely left too much up there, but whatever, it's fine. Better too much than not enough, right? Wow, you're getting my beautiful hair in this horrible lighting today. I look like a hot mess. Oh, look, there's my husband. <laughs> All right, so I hope you maybe found this video a little helpful. Again, just to reiterate, I'm very new at weaving. I just wanted to share with you how I do things, how I've, how I've figured out how to do things over the last, I don't know, year or two that I've been doing this. Um, what works for me, what hasn't worked for me. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, it's a good place to start. And if you think you might like to learn how to weave, there are some really affordable small looms. Um, like I said, mine is the Ashford 10 inch samplet loom. Um, there's a 16 inch samplet loom. I've never used a Cricut. I don't remember who makes Cricut. Is that Ashford or Schacht? It might be Schacht, I don't remember. Um, go to the Woolery. That's an excellent place to look at all the different um, various models of looms. And they have like floor looms and table looms. I mean, they've got all kinds of looms. But if you wanna see a, a large quantity of rigid heddle looms, I would recommend going to the, the Woolery's website and looking there because they have a lot of information about looms in general and there it's a good place to start. Um, anyway, if you think you might want to try, you know, that's a good place. A small rigid heddle loom um, is always good, especially if you then decide you really like it. You have a small loom that you can use to sample things which is basically what I'm gonna keep this for, which could be why it's called a sample it loom. <laughs> um, and once I get my larger loom assembled someday, um, I'll still use this one for smaller projects or to you know practice things as I learn new stuff. But I enjoy weaving, it's fun. Um, and if you have any questions about anything I showed on this video, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. You can also email me fibernymph at gmail.com and I'd be happy to answer questions there too. So anyway, again, I hope this was a little bit helpful and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.